what's up guys Alex here thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Vala. In this tutorial we're gonna take a look on how to build a build system in order to speed up our building process whenever we handle multiple files in Vala. Because if you remember in the last lesson if we open for example the application.vala, the file, and then we open the terminal. In order to compile our application, we used to type vala c, which is the vala compiler, then define it with a dash dash package option, the package that we want to incorporate, in our case gtk3, and then listing all the files that we want to encapsulate in our compiler, and then specifying the output called my app in order to have an executable file that we can run. This is of course not really maintainable and scalable, so we can use a build system in order to have everything automated and just trigger the building command with just one single option. So let's do it. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable, and affordable VPS in the cloud, skysilk.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. First of all, let's create a new file in our root directory and we're gonna call this file mason.build. And that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use the Mason build system, which it comes installed by default whenever you install the elementary SDK, the development package. Uh, you can check if your system currently have Mason by writing which Mason, and you should have the response of the directory where Mason install and check your version of Mason by typing Mason. Dash v. I'm currently running 0.48.2. Some developers like to call these Mason. I call it Mason, whatever. You can call it however you want. It's just an awesome build system that we're gonna learn how to use. So let's clear the terminal. Let's go back in our work code editor and in the Mason build system we need to specify really few parameters pretty much all the parameters that we were using in our terminal when we were triggering the Vala compiler. First we need to define a project and to define a project we need to specify in single quotes the name of the project and it looks like code is not recognizing this because it started with a plain text empty file so I'm gonna change the syntax to Mason so I have some really nice syntax highlighting. You can call the project however you want, but this is gonna be actually the output of your file, the output of your executable application. So I'm gonna follow the elementary as suggestion and convention to have the, the RDNN, the naming following the unique URL of your project. And because I'm on GitHub, I'm gonna use the com.github my username, which is alicad, and then the name of my project that should reflect the name of my repository, but this is a tutorial, the repository is Vala GTK tutorial, and we said we wanna build a to-do list, so I'm gonna call these, let's call it Jarvis, which is the name of the artificial intelligence that helps Iron Man and then it turned into Vision, because we're gonna build a to-do app, so something that is probably is gonna help us, uh, let's call it Jarvis, you can call it however you want, of course. After the first name of the, after the project name, we need to put a comma and specify the two programming languages that we're gonna actually use. And the first one, it's Vala, also in this case, it needs to be specified as a string in single quote. And the other one is C. We don't need to write semicolon or any special character to end the line, it's just go on another line. And now we need to specify uh, the executable list of files. So all those files that we have in our project that needs to be bundled inside this very own project when we trigger this building process. So we can do it by simply typing executable and the executable is basically an array, a list of all the options. The first one that we need to pass is the project name and automatically we didn't specify this variable project name, but Mason automatically grabs the project name from the variable or from the method that we used before, the project. The first one is the project name, so automatically Mason grabs that. Then we put a comma. The second option, basically here, we need to list all the files that we have in our directory and also the files that need to be specified as strings. Let's start with single quotes, main.vala, and of course you have to respect the uppercase if you wrote the name of the files lowercase of uppercase. Then we need to specify the window.vala and then the application.vala, and here I have an error. 
Pam, pam, pam. Okay, perfect. Now let's put a comma. And uh, the last thing when we need to specify is the list of dependencies that we used to specify when we were triggering the Vala compiler. In our case, we just have one dependency, which is GTK3. And we can specify this option by writing dependencies, column, open the square brackets. And here we can write a list of dependencies. So the first dependency that we need to check if GTK plus 3.0. Then after the square brackets, put a comma, and we need to specify that this application can be installed. Perfect. That's it. We created our first Mason or Mason build system that we can trigger. As you can see here, basically we did exactly the same that we were doing our terminal with Vala C. We're using Vala and C. We just specify a different name, a project name that is going to be automatically used to speed out our application. And then we're listing all the files that we have here, plus the packages dependencies that we want to include that we need to include in order to have our application properly compiling usable. So let's give it a try and see if it runs. First of all, let's open the terminal and let's go in the root location of our project. We need to trigger the Mason build. So we need to write Mason build dash dash prefix equal forward slash user. We should have an error, of course. So as you can see, as soon as we start triggering, as soon as we start, we try to trigger this thing, uh, Mason works because he generates the build directory and he generates uh, the log folder and the private folder, which we can leave. We don't need to access. Whenever there's an error, the log folder, the log file will be updated. So we can always check it there. But even if the generation of the build folder was successful, we had an error, and Mason is really good in telling us which error we have. We have an error in the Mason build file, and the error is that this file, application, whatever, doesn't exist because, of course, it's a typo, so it's actually application. So let's delete the build folder from our project and trigger again the Mason build prefix user, and everything was successful. So automatically we got our build folder and we got the dependencies. GTK3 was found because we have it installed the development version. That's perfect. Now, in order to actually generate our application, we can CD into the build folder and we can type Ninja. That's Mason way of saying, hey, generate our application. That's perfect. In order to trigger the file and see if it actually works, we can just simply from the build directory, we can type dot forward slash to say, hey, start from this directory and trigger the com dot github dot alicad dot jarvis. That is the name of my file. So you can type whatever executable you named your own application. If we hit enter, we're going to have our file up and running or our application up and running as usual as we're expecting. And until you close this application, this session of the terminal is blocked. You cannot do anything with this terminal because it's currently running this application. This is really useful because in this terminal, whenever you do something in your application, if something goes wrong, there's an error, there's a debug message, it's going to appear on the terminal. Of course, in the future of this series, we're going to see how to properly debug our application, how to probably keep track of all the segmentation faults or errors or bugs that we're going to have. But if I close this application, look what happened. Boom, automatically the terminal, it's free and it's not occupied anymore by this application. Well, that's pretty much it. This was a really, really easy and simple implementation of the Mason build system that now allows us to simply whenever we have an edit, so we open a file and we change something, Whenever we want to trigger a new build, we can just simply go inside the build folder and type ninja again. And of course, if we didn't change anything, it's just nothing to work. We don't have to type all the time Vala C and add all the files. Just type ninja and run your application and everything will run smoothly. So that's pretty much it for this lesson. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.